So for a lot of people getting into mushroom cultivation and mycology for the very first time, you're gonna hear the word SAB and you're gonna make yourself a SAB. I have videos showing you guys how to make them, but the issue with a SAB is a lot of people feel restricted or they cut up their arms on the armholes. So a lot of you guys ask me, Willie, is there any better options for people that don't like using SABs because they feel restricted or they cut their arms up? And the truth is, yes, there is. There's a compromise. It's a mix between an SAB and an open pore. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do that in this video. So stay tuned, let's go. Dripping on acid in the hotel lobby. Everything moving hella fast, Ricky Bobby. Floating in the ethers. Listen to the ethers, you can probably tell the future. Superhuman man. What's going on, Trip Team? First of all, welcome back to a brand new video. Now, if this is your first time on Willie's World, Welcome to the Trip Team family, TTF, that's what it's about. As always, all my social media is right there. Make sure you guys are following me. There's a ton of fake accounts. There's a ton of fake scammers that pretend to be me. Do not fall for it. If you don't see it right here, right on this side, then it's not me. Don't believe them. They steal my pictures, they steal my videos, and then they go out and they scam a lot of you guys in the community. If someone ever approaches you and says that they're gonna sell you something or they could sell you this or give you, don't listen to them. So if you're hearing that from somebody on Instagram or Twitter or Telegram or anything like that, it's not me, just walk away right away. This is all my social media right here. If you don't see it there, it's not me. So what is an SAB? An SAB is a clean space. It's a sterile space. You can do your grain to grain transfers, your agar transfers, your agar pours, your inoculations. It's a clean space that's free of contaminants. So when you guys first start out, you're probably not gonna have the money to buy a flow hood, which is the best way to do all this sterile work. You guys are probably gonna invest in a $10 SAB, a still air box, super cheap but really, really effective. It's very effective, and I used one when I first started out for a very long time, just as I'm sure a lot of veteran mycologists out there, they've done the same. You don't really have the money to invest, you know, four to a thousand dollars in a flow hood, so you go with a SAB. Now, the issue with a SAB is it's literally a sterile bin with two armholes cut into it. So pretty much you clean out the space on the inside with disinfectant and then you stick your arms through these holes and you do all your work inside that box. The issue with that is a lot of people are saying, well, it's cutting up my arms because of the armholes, you know, it's slicing me or I feel really restricted. I'd rather do open air pours. But the issue with an open air pour, if you just wanna pour agar, say like on your kitchen counter or something like that, the chances of those dishes getting contaminated is extremely high. You might be able to get away with it here and there or have a few good dishes, but eventually you're gonna run into contaminated dishes before you ever get to use them. So a lot of you guys said, well, is there a compromise? Is there a mix between open air pour and an SAB? And there actually is. So if you guys follow this method right here, your success rate will be extremely high, but you also have the freedom. You, you're not restricted at all. You're working inside of a clean space, but it's not restricted. You're not cutting up your arms. Now, a lot of people will cut the armholes and then put PVC piping in there, so that way they're not cutting up their arms, but they still get that restricted feeling of working inside the armholes. So that's why this is a good option. So let me show you guys what it is. I used this method for a very long time before I started investing into flow hoods and things like that. And I'm sure it will help out a lot of you guys that are just starting out. So let's jump right into it. All right, guys. So this is super, super, super simple. So pretty much you're just going to take a bin. You don't need to modify it. You don't need to cut no holes in it, anything like that. Literally just a bin with its lid and some Lysol. Now for the Lysol, you guys could use the aerosol one like I have here, which I think works best in all honesty, or you guys could use the spray bottle. It's completely up to you. Now, if you guys don't have Lysol or you don't have access to Lysol or any type of disinfectant like that, you guys could actually make your own. It's very simple. All you need to do is take 90% water and 10% bleach and you put that in a spray bottle that you could pick up from Walmart, Target, whatever. You mix it together in a 90-10 ratio, and then you guys could use that. 
It works the same exact way as Lysol or any other disinfectant that you guys could pick up at your local store. Now, before we actually start working inside of it, what we need to do is we need to make sure the bin is clean. So when you guys purchase the bin from any store, you guys are gonna wanna bring it home, clean it with soap and water, and dry it off. You guys are gonna wanna make sure you get in all the nooks and crannies so you'll see like there's little, you know, ridges on the sides and things like that. You guys wanna clean it really, really well. This is just gonna get off any dust or debris that might have collected in your bin or on top of the lid while it was at the store or while you guys had it in your house. You don't need to go buy a brand new bin for this. Now, once you guys have your bin all set and all ready, now what you guys wanna do is you actually wanna spray the entire inside with Lysol. So literally, all sides of the bin on the inside with Lysol, just like this. Once you guys get the inside, now you wanna take the lid, same exact thing, spray it with Lysol. Now, once you guys do that, what you wanna do is you wanna put the lid on. You wanna put the lid on the bin, and if it has latches, latch it closed. Now, once you guys have it latched closed, now you wanna let it sit for about 10 minutes. You wanna let all that air settle that's inside the bin. So there's gonna be disinfectant spray that's moving around in the air. There's gonna be you know, debris and just air movement. You wanna let that all settle because we're hoping that all the dust that might be moving around inside this bin will now settle and fall into the disinfectant that's covering all sides of the inside of the bin. So make sure you guys wait at least 10 minutes before you guys actually start working inside the bin. Now this isn't a still air box, but it's kind of like a still air box. This is more of an open pour technique. So if you guys don't want to use a still air box, you guys could actually do this and it has a really high success rate. So what we're going to do is we're going to let the air settle for 10 minutes. We're going to come back and we're going to pour some agar. All right, guys. So we've had our air settle for about 10 to 15 minutes. And now what we're going to do is we're actually going to put our agar and our Petri dishes inside our clean space. So what you want to do is you want to remove the lid. You want to place it off to the side and we're going to place our Petri dishes and our agar inside the bin. Now, before you put anything in there, whether it's your agar, your Petri dishes, it does not matter. You wanna wipe it down really good with some isopropyl alcohol. The reason why we do that is we don't wanna bring any contaminants into our clean space. So this is a clean space inside this bin right now. We don't wanna recontaminate it by bringing some dust or debris that might be on the sleeve of the Petri dishes or on our agar bottle or flask that we're actually using. So right now, I'm gonna remove the lid and we're just gonna place it off to the side. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our sleeve of dishes that we wiped down and we're gonna place it inside. And we're also gonna take our fresh agar and we're gonna place that inside. So now I got you guys a different view. You guys could see inside the bin. We're actually gonna take our Petri dishes out of the sleeve and I'm gonna take the sleeve and place it outside. And as you guys can see, we have our agar here. This is pretty much still liquid, but cool to the touch. You guys don't wanna pour it too hot. If you guys pour it too hot, you're gonna get a ton of condensation on the lids of your agar dishes. So let it cool to where you could handle it, but it's still liquid. So now we're gonna stop pouring. Now the way that I like to pour, I like to take about half the dishes, and make sure you guys are wearing gloves and that you use hand sanitizer on your gloves as well. And what I do is I loosen my lid. And now I'm going to remove the lid and we're going to start pouring. Remember, you guys don't want to fill up your dishes too much. And you're going to place it and you're just going to stack them. Now, if you guys don't know how to make agar, I got tons of videos on how to make all different types of agar. This agar that I'm using is a light malt extract agar. 
and it also has a little bit of oyster shell inside of it for some additional nutrients. Now the agar that I have here should do about 20 dishes. So these are stacks of 10. And you guys will notice I like to stack my agar dishes as I pour them. That helps the temperature even out even more because condensation is caused by a variance in temperature between the inside and outside temperatures. So by stacking your dishes, you really even out that temperature variance that you might get from the inside to the outside. Now there's a trick to pour an agar. You don't want to pour too heavy. You don't want to pour too light. If you pour too heavy, you're not going to have enough room for mycelium to grow. Uh, because it will be too close to the lid, so it will be touching the lid, it will grow onto the lid. You have a higher chance of contamination if you do that. If you fill it too low or not enough, then your agar can actually dry out. So it could dry out before the mycelium fully colonizes it the way you want it colonized. So you guys want to be filling it just right. There we go. And that's going to do it. I got three plates right here. These three plates, trash. Can't reuse these. They're already broken out of the sterile seal. So we can't use these. If we try to use these later, there's a really high chance of them getting contaminated. And that's pretty much it. Now this is the trick to make sure that it's a clean seal. Watch this. So now that we have our agar all poured, what you want to do is you want to take your Lysol one more time and just spray the lid one more time before you actually put the lid back on. Place the lid on and it's as easy as that. Now you're gonna leave your agar dishes inside this clean space until they fully solidify. This is a nice compromise between a still air box and an open pour. This is gonna give you a much higher efficiency. You guys are gonna have a lot more success with this method than just doing open pours, say on your kitchen counter or on your table or something like that. But you also get sort of that still air box benefit at the same time. So it's the best of both worlds. If you guys do this properly, you guys will have a perfect success rate every single time. It all comes down to sterile technique. You guys want to make sure that you're wiping everything down before you're placing it inside your bin. You guys are going to want to be wearing gloves with hand sanitizer. And you guys are going to want to try to do your pours as quickly and as efficiently as humanly possible. The longer it takes you to pour your agar to run through them stacks, the higher the chance of something falling onto them agar dishes that might contaminate it. So the quicker that you could pour it and get this closed, the more success you guys are gonna have. And there you go guys, that's the way you do an open air pour but with the benefit of a still air box. Now it's very important that you try to do it as fast as you possibly can when you're working here. You want to get your area set up inside the bin. You want to do what you have to do and then you want to throw the lid on there until your agar solidifies. Or if you're done with your inoculations or your grain to grain, you take them out and you put them off to the side. You're only going to do your sterile work inside here and after that, you're all done. Like I said, I used this method for a long time, had a lot of great success at it. And I just wanted to share it with you guys because I think a lot of you guys will benefit from it. You know, the people that are out there that don't want to use the SAB because of whatever the reason may be, they like doing open air pours. Well, this is the best of both worlds. And the best part about this is we're going to be using these agar dishes in a video immediately after this one. So if you guys are on my Patreon, you guys will be able to watch that video. Literally, right here I'm recording and then we're jumping into another video. So I'm going to have on the same clothes and everything. We're going to be doing something with that agar that I can't put out on YouTube. So if you guys want to see what we're going to be doing, then go check me out on Patreon because that video will be up there. It's a Patreon exclusive and you guys will get access to a ton of other exclusive content that you can't get nowhere else. And I want to thank every single one of you guys that support me over there because if it wasn't for you guys over there supporting me, then we wouldn't be able to keep this going. You know, we don't really make any money here on YouTube, so all the money that supports the content that we put out comes from Patreon. So every single one of you guys are helping support more and more content, so I really, really appreciate that. 
you know, I absolutely love you guys from the bottom of my heart. I thank you. So if you guys want to check that out, make sure you go do that. But really, at the end of the day, this is how you get the best of both worlds. It's an SAB open air pour smashed together to create a really effective sterile space that you guys could work in to do all your sterile work. When you guys do have the funds, you guys are able to save up, then definitely I suggest getting a flow hood. It's going to make things so much easier. You're going to have all the space in the world to work with. But until then, you guys do have options to do everything. I mean, you could do cloning in here. You could do isolations. You could do pours. You could do inoculations, LCs, all different types of stuff in this space without it getting contaminated if you guys do it the right way. With that said, I want to thank you guys so much for all your love and support, for supporting me here on YouTube, for supporting me on Patreon and social media. You guys are absolutely amazing. I could not do this without you. I love you guys. I'm Willie Michael. Do good, be good, live good. Namaste.